Hello, I'm Carolyn from cuttingtime.blogspot.com. This video is going to be part one in a series featuring single line fonts. So far, I've found three websites that you can download fonts for free and use them in Inkscape to create files for your cutter. And why I'm creating these videos is a few of them need a little bit of manual manipulation to make them suitable for projects for cutting out. So the first site I would like to feature is actually an extension that you download and add to Inkscape. I will add the link to this website directly underneath the video that you're now watching. It is also available on my blog. So follow one of the links to this site and read the instructions. There will be a link to download and the instructions to install are very easy to follow. And as you can see here, there's lots of examples of the fonts and how to use them. What I'm just going to show you in Inkscape is how these fonts will apply to creating files for your cutter. So let's just come back to Inkscape. Now once you've installed it, the next time you open Inkscape, the font will be available. So what you'll do is go to Extensions, then Render, and then Hershey Text. And you get this new box. In text, this is where you will type the text that you want to write. I can see here in text, I've already got the word princess. That's because I've been working on a rhinestone design for a friend of mine. So you would type whatever text you want for your project in text. For action, you're going to select typeset that text. Font face, this is where you select your font. Now you can see here, there are a lot to select from. Now, some of these are good for rhinestone designs. Some do have a double or triple line and they'd be good for using your pen or for using an engraving tool in your cutter. I can tell you now, sans one stroke and script one stroke alt are excellent for rhinestone designs. And these two fonts are also good for using a pen in your cutter to get that handwritten look. Now, if you'd like to save yourself time of testing out each of these fonts to see what they look like, if you'd like to visit my blog, I've actually already done the hard work. You can see here, I've actually got a sample of each one of the fonts available and a little bit more information of how you can use them and which ones are good for what type of project. So let's head back to Inkscape. I've typed my text, I've selected the action and I've selected the font. So I'm just going to click on Apply. I could just close this box. I've just zoomed in. We can see down on the lower left it is a stroke line. But looking closely, you can see it is a series of straight lines. Now, after a lot of experimenting, I haven't had a problem leaving it with the straight lines for creating rhinestone designs. But if I want to use a pen in my cutter, I'm going to need to make these lines smoother. So I'm just going to select the whole word and go Path, Simplify. Zoom back in. You can see it didn't simplify enough, so I'll just simplify again. Now your simplification settings might do it first time round. I've got my settings on a very low number from another project. Now I'm going to look closely again. You can see here that there's still a few little wonky bits in the text. Now if I was using a pen, I wouldn't want this to be visible. So you can just go along and manually change the few that need adapting. So you can either use the handles and change it, but I've actually found in a lot of cases you can just delete that node and it will give you a smooth line. So just come along and look at each letter. See on this N, a little bit wonky here. So we'll just delete that. At this stage, it is actually personal preference. You've got to change it to suit the look you're trying to achieve. See, we can see here on the E and the S, there's a few little bits that need fixing. So I'm getting away on this one with just deleting them. Now I can see on this C, there's two little areas that need fixing. Now if I delete both those nodes, chances are it's going to change the shape, which it did, and I don't like. So what I would do in this case is just use the handles either side of the node 
and just smooth the curve. Now I'm not going to go through and do this all perfectly. The purpose of this video is just to give you an overview of how these fonts can be used. As I mentioned earlier, I've been using this word princess to try and create a rhinestone design for over a week now. And I'll just show you how far I've got. There's my sample here. Now I'll actually be doing a separate video showing how you can get to this quite easily by using these Hershey fonts. And I just want to talk about the differences between using the Hershey font extension and typing a font in the normal manner. I'm just going to click on the word. Now we can see here that is a group. So I'll just ungroup it and click on one letter. We can see it is a path with 12 nodes. Before I finish, you may have noticed at the top left of this capital P, it looks like there's a piece missing. Now if you wanted to print that, that could be a problem and it can be changed by changing the stroke. At the moment, the cap is on butt cap. If we change it to square cap, it gives a different look. I'm just going to change it back to butt because I'm going to show it really doesn't make a difference. So if you're doing a lot of projects and you want to save time, this is only visual. For printing, yes it matters, but for sending it to your cutter, it doesn't matter at all. Just have a look in outline mode. So I'll go view, display mode, outline. We can see this is not a problem in that corner. This is the line the program for your cutter is going to follow. So you can see all these lines connect. Let's go back to normal mode. Now you may have noticed when you're working with single line fonts do not go path union. I'll just show you what happens. Go path union. You can see that it's actually closed all the fonts. So instead of these being open lines it's actually closed them. Just go back. So to keep all these individual letters together you can either just group or you can go path combine. Another thing to remember when working with single line fonts, if you want to change the colour on the screen, don't use a fill. So I'm just going to click on lime green. You can see the same thing happened like for path union. It's looking at this as a closed shape and is filling in the spaces. So if you want to change the colour, you're going to change just the stroke line. You can see in the lower left it is black. So if I want to change that to lime green, I can either hold down the shift key and select the colour or I can right mouse click and then just select set stroke. So just remember when you're working with single line fonts it is a stroke line and treat it as such. In this video it's just been a brief overview of how you can use the Hershey font extension to create files for your cutter. What I suggest is download the extension and just experiment with it and see what you can create. My next video is going to feature two more websites where you can download single line fonts for free and I'll show once again some examples of how you can use them. Thank you for your time. Bye.